Hey, what's up guys? Back again with another video in the C++ series. This time I'm going to show you how to use pointers as function parameters. So it's not actually that hard, it's just, um, you know, how we'd, how the same way you would do it with a regular function parameter. So let's take a look at that. So if we make a simple function here, we'll call it, uh, let's say we want to have a number. So we'll have a number called integer um, number and it has an initial value of 10. And let's say we want to double that number. How would we do that with a normal function? We might uh, make a function that returns a integer. So integer double or yeah, integer double number, and then you provide a number as the parameter. So integer number, which will be the number that is to be doubled. And so then we're just going to return number times two. Of course, let me zoom in for you. So there we go. And so what is going to happen here is as you pass this number variable to this function here as a as an argument to the parameter, it's going to create another uh, variable here called a number and it's going to exist for the scope of this function. So as long as this function is running inside of the scope of this function within these two brackets, these opening and closing brackets here, you'll have this, uh, this variable here. And when the, whenever the function is done running, this variable will cease to exist. So yeah, it's pretty simple. You should know that by now, but let's try using it. So double number, so it's returning integer. So we'll just reassign number is equal to double number and we'll pass in number as the parameter. There we go. And um, that's one way to do it. Of course, if you run this, it'll work, but there's another way to do it. You could also do a reference parameter and then just use the reference parameter as the parameter so that you don't have to return anything. Um, but you can also use a pointer. So let's look at that. So let's say that you want to do that double a number, but with a pointer instead. So what you could do is, you know, denote this as a pointer. So what you're going to do here is provide either a pointer as the parameter or it'll also accept a memory address. And then what it, it, it will do is as this function is being called, it will create this uh, pointer variable called number from that address or pointer that you're providing. And of course, just like any other variable, this will only exist within the life of the scope of this function here. So instead of doing return number times two now, we can just turn this to void and then do um, dereference number and then do is equal to uh, dereference number times two. So the reason you don't really need to re um, return anything is because since we have a pointer here that points to the address being provided, you're, you're able to directly access the value at that address, which happens to be number once we actually you know call this in a second here but uh, basically after you get a pointer to that address you can then directly uh, directly uh, access it and change it you know print it out whatever you want to do in this case we're just multiplying it pretty simple so it's very similar to a reference variable except that a reference variable is literally the same variable the same address and uh, maybe I can make a separate video on that but um, it's a little different because you're still making a new variable for the life of the scope of this function here except that it's a pointer variable. So let me show you how we can use this. So if we do int number is equal to 10, we can then, if we want to double that, we could do double number and then just pass in number and it doesn't return anything. Um, but we do have a problem here. It says no matching function call for double number. And that's because right here we're providing a number, but if we do control P, it says that it's asking for a pointer to an integer. So this is just a normal uh, a normal integer here. So if you want to make this a pointer to an integer, um, well, you could also just provide the memory address. So like I said, um, you can either provide a memory address as the parameter or you can actually provide a pointer since it of course does point to an integer. So that's one way of doing it, just providing the memory address directly or you could also make a pointer. So integer pointer, or pointer to an integer rather, and then we could do number PTR is equal to the address of number and then just directly pass in number PTR. That's one way of doing it, but there's really no point in declaring a whole new variable if you don't really have to. Might as well just use what you have already just by providing the memory address, which will then be copied into this local variable here. And then you can directly access the address of this number pointer here that you have created. So yeah, hopefully that all makes sense. You're basically just passing in an, an address. You're creating a pointer from that address and then you can manipulate it um, directly, you know, from that address. Um, but yeah, so keep in mind, just one more thing, just to reiterate, keep in mind this parameter here, the parameter that is being made from whatever is provided, um, this is not the same as this one here. This is just an outside variable, and then you're passing in a pointer or a memory address 
as the argument and then that's going to be used to craft an entirely new variable pointer here that points to that same memory address just like you would use with a regular um, function function that is passing it by value so it's, it's still being passed by value not by reference so here's where we can do some more stuff you can also do a a parameter that is a constant so last episode hopefully you watched last episode if you didn't go ahead and watch it but we talked about constant parameters and then also we talked about pointers that point to a constant variable or a constant value so let's say we want to make a function that only is able to print out a value not change the value so what I mean by that is let's let's make a void function here so we'll call it print name and print name is going to accept a string a pointer to a string or a memory address of course and what it's going to do well we need a name obviously right so we'll call this name and so what it's going to do is just say see out hello my name is and then just say um, we have to dereference it name just like that hello my name is inline there we go and of course we need the thingy right there so since we know that this function here has a pointer to a string and we know that it's only printing it out it's not altering the string at that memory address in any way we can go ahead and make this a pointer to a constant so that um, you're basically just confirming that you're not going to be changing anything that's one way to help you as the programmer understand what the function is doing and yeah so that's I guess that's kind of helpful for you and for other programmers too if they're looking at your code so if we make this a string a constant string here what this means is that it's a pointer to a constant value this means that whatever memory address or whatever pointer is passed as an argument to this parameter here the value at that memory address cannot be altered in any way since it's a constant okay so let's see how we can use this in our program so let's say we have a string here a constant string um, say name we can call it how about we just call it something different just to <clears throat> how about we just call it something different not to be confusing we'll call it um, cool name is equal to and we'll say Cody Simpson and then of course we want to call this function here because we want to see our name printed out so we'll do print name and then either we can either provide a pointer to that name if we want to doesn't really matter how you do it or you can just provide the memory address itself so we can just do cool name just like that and it should if we run this say hello my name is Cody Simpson there we go so it says my name is Cody Simpson but something cool about this um, if you want to take this even further is that you don't actually need to pass a constant string as the argument even though the parameter here still says constant string name that is for the variable being used inside the scope of this function here it has nothing to do with um, if a constant string is actually provided to this function as an argument so let me show you what I mean by that so if you wanted to we can make another um, another variable here a string called string grandma and grandma could be equal to grandma Jenkins and then we could do print let's say we want to print out grandma how do we do that with do print name and then we could actually just provide the address of grandma and this is actually valid because um, grandma is indeed a string and it's not a constant but that's okay you can actually provide a non-constant string as a argument to this parameter here so, and it will still work but this just means that the pointer that is being created from that memory address inside the function here still is a constant so it has to follow the rules of a constant inside of it so just to reiterate again you don't need to provide a constant string but you maybe should or you can it doesn't really matter the rules that need to be followed for constants are only are being applied to inside the function where the pr where the uh, the pointer is being made, made which is a name it's a pointer to a constant string okay and in case you're wondering um, this is useful for situations where you know ahead of time that you don't want to change anything so just to be safe you want to make sure that it's a constant string, a pointer to a constant string rather than just a string. So that means that if you accidentally, if let's say this is a massive function, that's huge, many hundreds of lines or something crazy like that. If for some reason you were to accidentally do name is equal to Bob, the compiler or the IDE would even tell you you can't do that. That's a no-no because it's a constant string. So that's why it might be important to declare the parameters as constant strings rather than just string because then it's allowed.
um, or rather it's 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 allowed if you of course if you dereference it but same thing if I was to put this back here see the error comes back so you can't change it so um, yeah and then also like I said a second ago it also helps the programmer understand um, what's actually happening here it's not changing anything it's only printing something or displaying something or retrieving something any of those anyways let's move on to the last thing um, you can also do a constant uh, a pointer you can also do a constant pointer to a constant value just like we saw last episode you can combine all of them you can even do that here so if you want to combine all of them you can do that so constant string constant name you can do that no problem no problem but then you can also do this if you want to it really does not matter um, but this just keep in mind that this only applies to the variable being used inside the function it does not apply to the variable being provided inside the function of course if you have a constant pointer to a constant value this means that this name pointer here that we have inside the scope of this function will not be able to change the address and it will also not be able to change the value at that address just like we saw last episode okay and the last thing I want to show you is um, the, well there's a common thing you might do with um, arrays you might provide an array as a parameter but let's say that you want to provide a pointer to an array as a parameter how would we do that well let's say well first we need an array to actually work with don't we so let's do that so we'll make a, a array so double scores and that's going to be equal to let's say about five scores so 100.0 95.6 All right, so those are our scores, and of course, let's also provide a size. You don't really have to because it's exp it's implied because we provided an initialization initialization list. But let's say that we do have a constant up here, so constant integer um, array size, and that's going to be equal to five. Let's say we do have this here, and the reason um, I'm not sure if I explained this to you before, but you actually do have to provide a constant inside of here. So you could do a five if you want to, because the five is not connected to a variable, so it's never going to change. But if you were to make a variable like integer size is equal to five, and then provide size inside of here, that's a problem because the compiler needs to know at runtime what the sizes of all the variables are. Are excuse me, they need to know what the size of all the variables are. Um, so that's a no-no. So we'll see actually next episode where we look into dynamic memory al allocation. So that's going to be a way in which we can get around this problem where we can have dynamic sizes and stuff like that. And it's going to be pretty cool. But um, yeah, so let's use our constant variable that we declared above inside of here. So array size. And now let's say that we want to make another function here. We'll call it void print array. Or actually, no, we'll do, yeah, we can do print array. So print array. And we're going to provide a, what we want to do is pass this array as a pointer. So how would we do that? Of course, an array, if you were just to provide scores by itself, would be a, a memory address of the first element. So we could do that. We could do a pointer to a double. And we can even make this a constant pointer to a double. Since we know we're not going to be changing anything, we're only going to, going to be printing the values. So we'll do score scores array like that. And then if we want to, we could provide the size as the second parameter. But since we have a global variable right here, we could just pass it right in just like here. So Or not, not pass it in, I mean. So passing it in is not required since it's a global variable. That means that it's available in every single scope of the program, the integer main, and then also the, the ones that you declare above that. Anyway, so let's say we want to loop through that um, array here. So for integer i is equal to 0, i is less than array size i plus plus and then we want to um, just print the array so we're just going to output each element in the array so scores array i of course you don't need to dereference it because we saw that um, that's not needed you can use the syntax if it's a pointer but um, as long as you're being careful to stay within the size of the actual array itself and so yeah we'll do that so that should be all we need to print out the array pretty simple right but uh, let's say we want to also double the array. So void, just for more practice, of course. So void double array constant. Oh, yeah, actually, okay. So here is where we don't want to use constant because we know we're going to be altering the values of this pointer here. So we don't want to provide a constant. We want to provide a double just by itself. So double scores array, right? So now inside of here, we could do, let's just copy this because I'm lazy. 
So this time, instead of printing it out for each value in the array, we want to do uh, scores array i is equal to scores array i, oops, scores array i for the index times 2. So that should double each value in the array. Um, it's the same concept, except this time we're not using constant in front because we know we're going to be altering the values within this pointer here. All right, so that should do that, do that for us. So let's test it out. So first we're going to print it out so we can see the initial array um, in the console just to make sure it works correctly. So scores, and then we're going to do double array, scores, and then we're going to print it out one more time after we doubled it to see the result. So let's run this now. There we go. So we get 100, 95.6, 97.8, 98, 23.3, 200, 191.2, 195.6, 196, and 46.6. So we do indeed get exactly what we expected. So that's pretty simple. Um, so good, that's exactly what we wanted. And uh, furthermore, you can see the differences in situations in which you might want to use a constant versus just a normal double. Of course, we could we could actually get rid of this. There would be no problem, but it's still helpful to you and other programmers to have this here. And also, like I said, if you mess up, then it won't. It'll it'll warn you basically. Okay. So yeah, that's about it for that. That's about it for um, how to use pointers inside of functions uh, as parameters. Hopefully you found that pretty interesting. But now that we're done looking at the basics of pointers, how to use them and stuff like that, we're going to actually move on to dynamic memory allocation, which I told you about a second ago. And that's going to allow us to do some pretty cool things. Um, um, you're not going to be doing too much with it right now, just in you know where we are in this tutorial series. But later on in your C++ programming, you're going to be using pointers a lot. So they're going to be pretty useful. And uh, yeah, so hopefully you are excited for that. So stay tuned for that. And if you um, have any suggestions for also anything that you haven't seen from me that you do want to see, like suggestions on how to improve videos or suggestions on future things that you want to see me cover, then let me know in the comment section below. Or you can join our Discord server. We have a Discord server where you can leave suggestions if you want to. So right here we have a... Discord server, and I have a suggestions channel, so you can leave suggestions inside of here, and some of them I'll actually do if they're good ideas. Um, so make sure you join this. There's a link for this in the description below. So check it out. And then furthermore, one more thing is that we have um, some, if you want to see the code for this episode, I have the link for this in the description below, and they're all commented. Uh, there's not too many comments for this episode because it was pretty simple. But yeah, yeah, I'll do this for every single episode. You'll have comments next to all the code, so you can... Um, see all the concepts in text form in case you didn't understand what I was talking about in the video. So yeah, anyway, make sure you check that out. Maybe bookmark it for future use. And that's about it. So if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And peace.